amino and carboxyl groups of amino acids along with the ionizable R groups of some amino acids function as weak acids and bases, right? So they have at least two ionizable groups. Now, what are they? As I said, amino terminus and carboxy terminus, right? And an amino acid lacking an ionizable R group is dissolved in water at neutral pH. It exists in solution as dipolar iron or zwitter iron. And this is called as a zwitter ionic form. Right? This is a non-ionic form where you represent amino acids as NH2 and COOH. And as a zwitter ionic form, you express it as NH3 plus and COO minus. Now, a zwitter ion can function as an acid is when your NH2 is uh, not protonated, right? And this is where the zwitter ion acts as an acid. Zwitter ion acting as a base is when NH3 is protonated and COOH is not protonated. In addition, some amino acids have a third ionizable group. Now, if the R group were to have another uh, functionality that is ionizable, then you would have an additional complication for this amino acid. In addition to COOH and NH3+, R would also be ionizable. Right? Every ionizable group has a pKa. Now, remember what I said, right? You need to be familiarized with pH and pKa. pKa, again, reiterating what I said before in the previous chapter, pKa is the pH at which a specific functional group loses or gains a proton. Right? Now, if you were to look at this uh, structure here, carboxylic acid, right? The carboxylic acid in this specific uh, amino acid loses a proton and becomes carboxylate. And when it does that, the net charge becomes zero. The pH at which this specific, fun specific functional group loses its proton is the pKa of that functional group. Right? At a specific pH, COOH loses its proton. NH3+, plus, however, does not lose its proton at the same pH as the carboxylic acid. It requires a higher pH for NH3+, plus, and at higher pH, NH3 plus also loses a proton and becomes NH2. Now, when this kind of a proton exchange happens, the charge of the molecule changes, right? Now, if you consider, for example, at a pH of one or two, the amino acid in solution will look like this with a net charge of plus one, right? At a pH of seven, right? The carboxylic acid would have lost its proton and become CO minus. And so the net charge is zero because the negative charge equalizes the positive charge. If you increase the pH further to about 11 or 12, the amino group loses uh, its proton and becomes neutral. At the same time, the molecule's charge becomes negative because there's a negatively charged carboxylate. So that's how Amino acids function as, uh, or amino acids have acid-base properties, and the ionizable groups can help amino acids to alter the pKa or pH. This slide shows the properties and conventions associated with the common amino acids found in proteins. Right now, there are certain things in this table, it's table three point one that I want you to remember, right? You can have this table with you all the times, right? If you want, you can print it out and just paste it right in front of you where you sit because there are certain things that you need to remember, right? These are basic things. This is where you start. Biochemistry 101, right? The names of amino acids, relate them to the structure and 
relate them to their three letter abbreviation and their one letter abbreviation. The reason is because when you look at protein sequences, a protein sequence is a sequence of amino acids, right? And that sequence is unique for unique proteins. So the sequence is usually written in one letter amino acids. So one letter abbreviation for amino acids. And these one letter abbreviation could be the starting letter of that amino acid, or it may not be. For example, glycine is G, right? Alanine is A, proline is P, valine, valine is V, leucine is L, isoleucine is I, methionine is M. Whereas phenylalanine is not P, but F, because P is taken up by proline. Tyrosine is not T, but Y. Tryptophan is W. So there is this difference, right? In addition to this, I also want you to remember the PKA for R groups. Um, now, one of the PKAs listed in this specific slide is for tyrosine, that is 10.07. Remember that number, 10.00 is fine. The other PKA values for the carboxylate as well as the amine are quite similar for almost all amino acids. For example, the PKA for carboxylic acid is close to two, right? And for amine is close to 9.6 or 10. So that's something that I want you to remember. PI for these amino acids can be referenced from this table and so is the hydropathy index. So remember three things. One is the name, the three letter abbreviation, and the one letter abbreviation, and the PKA. Now getting back to the second part of the table, right? We're looking at polar uncharged R groups and positively and negatively charged uh, R groups here. Again, if you look at the one letter abbreviation, serine has S, threonine has T, right? Threonine holds T as the one letter abbreviation for itself and not tyrosine and tryptophan. Cysteine uh, C, asparagine is not A, but N. Glutamine is not G, but Q. A is alanine and G is glycine, right? And when it, comes to, when it comes to positively charged R groups, lysine is not L, but K. Histidine is H. Arginine is not A, but R. And when it comes to negatively charged amino acids, aspartate is not A, but D. Glutamate is not G, but E. Again, now here, this table is very important because it list the PK of R groups of some of the important amino acids. Now, all those that have a PK for an R group are the one that are ionizable, right? Cysteine has a PK for its R group. That means the SH group can become S minus, right? It can lose a proton. And 8.18, at pH 8.18, the SH group in cysteine, the side chain of S cysteine, loses its proton and becomes S minus. That's what it means. At a pK or at a pH of 10.53, the side chain of lysine, which is an NH3 plus group, right? It's a primary amine, loses a proton and becomes NH2. At pH 6.00, histidine loses a proton. Histidine remember, has an imidazole side chain. One of the nitrogen is protonated and it loses that proton uh, and becomes neutral above pH 6. Similarly, arginine has a pKa of 12.48. Aspartate and glutamate, important ones, remember these pKa numbers, 3.65 and 4.25. Now you need to remember all these pKa values for side chains, whereas for the carboxylate and the amino terminus, you don't have to remember much because they're pretty close, 2.0 and 9.6. You just have to remember those numbers. So it's 
pretty much uh, what you have to remember, right? So again, reiterating the fact, what you need to remember, the name and the abbreviations. The three letter abbreviation is easy. You need to remember the name and the one letter abbreviation and the PK of the side chains. So let's sum up. Ionization of amino acids goes like this, right? At acidic pH, carboxyl group is protonated and the amino acid is in the cationic form, right? And the charge, depending on whether the side chain of the amino acid is neutral or not, if it is neutral, then the charge is plus one. At neutral pH, the carboxyl group is deprotonated, but the amino group is protonated and the net charge is zero for a neutral side chain amino acid. At alkaline pH, the amino group is neutral because it loses a proton and the amino acid is in the anionic form because the carboxylate is still um, deprotonated and hence has a negative one charge if the side chain is neutral. So remember this.